In this video, I am going to discuss about circular flow of income. The circular flow of income is an economic model that visualizes the exchange of money and goods in an economy. It illustrates how households, businesses and the government interact in the marketplace. The model consists of two main components. First one is the real flow of goods and services between firms and households. The second one is the monetary flow of payments for goods and services between firms and households and between households and the government. This is an illustration of the circular flow of income. The rectangle represents the economy. So within the rectangle, we consider all these aspects as the economy. So let's see how firms and households are interacting within an economy. Firms provide goods and services to the households. They spend money or they consume the goods and services in exchange. How the households have the money in the first place to buy goods and services. They can provide factors to the firms in the form of labor and raw materials. In exchange, firms will provide them income or salaries. This is how households have the money. This is the simplest form of the circular flow of income in an economy. The flow of money and goods is continuous as households use their income to purchase goods and services from firms, which in turn use the revenue to pay for factors of production such as labor and raw materials from households. This creates a circular flow of income between households and firms. The government also plays a role in the circular flow of income by collecting taxes from households. This is an withdrawal from the economy and using them to finance public goods and services. These are injecting to the economy. Additionally, the government can influence the economy by changing tax policies and spending levels. Injections in an economy refer to any additions to the flow of spending that increase the overall level of economic activity. These injections serve as a driving force in the circular flow of income as they stimulate demand for goods and services and ultimately drive economic growth. There are three types of injections in an economy. Investment spending. This refers to spending by firms on new capital goods such as machinery and buildings. Investment spending stimulates demand for goods and services as firms need to purchase these items in order to produce and sell their products. Government spending. The government can increase economic activity through spending on goods and services such as public works projects and transfer payments to households. Exports. Exports refer to goods and services sold by a country to another country. When a country exports more than it imports, this creates a net injection of spending into the economy. These all are considered as injections to the economy. Withdrawals. Withdrawals in an economy refer to any reductions in spending that decrease the overall level of economic activity. These withdrawals act as a drag on the circular flow of income and can impede economic growth. Savings When households save a portion of their income, this reduces the amount of spending in the economy. Taxes The government can reduce spending in the economy through the collection of taxes from households and firms. Imports Imports refers to goods and services purchased by a country from other countries. When a country imports more than it exports, this creates a net withdrawal of spending from the economy. Injections into the economy can offset any reductions in spending, such as a decrease in household consumption or a decrease in investment spending, and help to maintain overall economic growth. Withdrawals from the economy can offset any injections into the economy, such as an increase in investment spending or an increase in government spending.
and slow down overall economic growth. Ultimately, the governments can control the economy by managing the injections and withdrawals. Now let's talk about the circular flow of equilibrium. When an economy's injections and withdrawals are the same, it is called the circular flow is at equilibrium, which means injections and the withdrawals are equal. They are setting off each other. So the following equation can be formed. I plus G plus X equals to S plus T plus M, which means investments, government spendings and exports will be equal to savings, tax and imports. Now let's talk about the accelerator. The accelerator in an economy refers to the relationship between changes in investment spending and changes in output. Basically, what will happen if the investments are spent on the economy with regards to the output? The basic idea of the accelerator is that an increase in output leads to an increase in investment spending and vice versa. As the investments grow the economy, the aggregate demand will also increase. If the aggregate supply in the economy is not fulfilling the total demand, it will create an inflation. We talked about the aggregate demand and the aggregate supply. If you haven't watched the video, you can click the banner on the top right hand corner. The accelerator is based on the concept that firms make investments to produce more goods and services as demand for their products increases. For example, if a firm experiences an increase in sales, it may decide to invest in new machinery or expand its production facilities to meet the increased demand. This investment spending leads to an increase in economic activity and further increases in output. Now let's talk about the multiplier. This is a very important concept. The multiplier is a concept in economics that measures the impact of changes in spending on the overall level of economic activity. The basic idea is that an initial increase in spending can lead to a much larger increase in output and income. The multiplier effect can be accurately measured by using the marginal propensity to consume. We talked about this earlier. When an initial spending or injection made to an economy, it will multiply and create more output and income rather than the initial value. For example, a person spends $100 on a new car. This initial spending generates income for the car manufacturer who uses some of this income to pay its workers. The workers then use their additional income to purchase goods and services from other businesses which generates further income. This process continues leading to a cascade of spending and income generation throughout the economy. If the person who receives additional income spends 90% of it, which means the marginal propensity to consume is 0.9, the multiplier can be calculated as follows. This is the equation to calculate the multiplier. K denotes the multiplier. So the K equals to 1 over 1 minus MPC. In this case, 1 over 1 minus 0.9. Remember that MPC is a decimal number between 0 and 1. So this percentage has to be converted into a decimal. We can simply divide this percentage value by 100. So it will be 0.9. So the multiplier will be for this case 10. Now we can find what is the total increase in economic activities because of the $100. This is the equation to calculate that. Multiplier multiplied by initial injection equal to total increase in economic activities. In this case, the initial injection, this initial injection is $100 and the multiplier is 10. So the total increase in economic activities is $1000.
See, initially the person spends only $100, but ultimately that created $1000 of income in the economy. This means that the initial spending of $100 leads to a total increase in spending of $1000, which generates a corresponding increase in economic activity. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.